Commander from Fighter Director. AGC, go ahead. Getting IFF on those bogeys now, Commander. Must be your replacements. Thanks. Be right in. Can't tell for certain, but it looks like six planes. Roger. Since six of them. Six replacements. Well, let's let's wait and talk to the commander. Commander. Sir, could we, uh, that is, could Ensign Peters and I talk to you just for a couple of minutes, sir? Go to my quarters and wait for me. Aye, aye sir. How many planes? There appear to be six of them, Commander. Would that be right? Yes, three VF, two VSB, one VT. Well, I guess that fills your compliment, doesn't it? And I hope to God it stays full for a while. We don't make any money on transients. No. Four out of the last six replacements. One day's action. What happens to the other two, Burns and Peters? We're going to tell them right now. Pass the word when those planes are coming aboard. Aye. Right. Six friendly, two five five, twenty two. Doesn't do any good for me to say I'm sorry it has to be this way. This is the way it has to be. Mr. Burns, you know where you were wrong. And all I can tell you is that there's no place for you aboard this ship. We can't jeopardize a mission through your kind of mistake. There's nothing personal about this. We just can't afford to give you a second chance. Mr. Peters, your mistake is more serious. I don't need to tell you just how serious. There's no use in our talking about it. You'll get your chance to talk at a general court. That's all. As soon as those pilots come aboard, tell them I want to see them immediately in number one ready room. Hey, boy, come along. Here comes three. <laughs> All pilots who have just landed, lay below to number one ready room. All pilots who have just landed, lay below to number one ready room. Man, I didn't know they built them this big. Brother, there's a lot of things you don't know. Listen to the two anchor men racing their engines. Hey, don't anybody tell the jacks we're here. They'll quit. All they gotta do is get one look at us and the war's over. Hey, don't get it over with that fast. I want some medals. Personally, all I want is a couple of Navy crosses. Good evening, Commander. Good evening. Nice job of scouting yesterday, Bill. Recommending you for it. Thank you, Commander. I'm sorry about my wingman. At a time like that, you're not expected to play nursemaid. Thank you, sir. brought the TBF aboard? I did, sir. Ensign Wilk. First seat, second row. Dive bombers? Ensign Bryce, sir. Ensign Murphy, sir. Two chairs, second row. Your fighter pilots? Ensign Lee, sir. Ensign Reese, sir. Ensign Coy, sir. Take these three. Yesterday morning, six other pilots sat where you're sitting now. One of those six is being put on the beach. You're in his seat, Murphy. Another is facing a general court. You, Mr. Reese, are taking his place. The other four are dead. This ship has just fought through one hell of an action, and she did all right at it. In spite of the people you're replacing, those men never got the word. They didn't bother to get it while they were in training because they thought they'd get the real word when they got to the fleet. By that time, it was too late. They just didn't know the answers when the test came. Mr. Wilkes, 
How's your navigation? I got 3.5, sir. Pretty good. Might be good enough. The man who sat there yesterday wasn't that good. Mr. Murphy, what was your final overall average? 3.15, sir. I was pretty good in flying. In dive bombing, I had 65% hits. Pretty lousy in communication, sir. You're on the right chair, Murphy. He never learned code either. He just didn't bother. Some of those men I knew in training. I knew them all from their flight records because I was the training officer while they were going through operation. They were wrong. Every one of them. Martin, Royal, Rossi, Andrews, Burns, and Peters. They were wrong from the beginning. Not very far wrong. In this business, a man doesn't have to be very far wrong to get killed. But they weren't really lost in combat yesterday. They were lost in operational training. And I can take you right back to the time they were going through operational and show you where each one of them made his first mistake. You made a couple of nice clean breaks that time. Martin, you're still getting pulled flat on that overhead. How many times do I have to tell you that you've got to come straight down using plenty of deflection and using your excess speed to regain position in a hurry for another attack? What you're doing every time is to get pulled flat for a no deflection shot. But I get a lot more hits that way. I know it. And it's swell to get in that position against a fighter. But try that against a bomber with a tail stinger and it'll blast you right out of the air. Yes, sir. Look, don't just take my word for it. Think about it. It's obvious. You got the roll over while you're still ahead of the target. Then you hold your dive and you pass him like this. He can't lay a gun on you. But if you flatten out a stern of him, losing all your speed, why, then you're just sitting there like a clay pigeon. On the next one as soon as you're ready. Information immediately. Here he comes now. Did I do something wrong? Did you do something wrong? Listen, mister. The one unforgivable sin here or in the fleet is for a wingman to haul off and leave his section leader. Don't ever do it again. Oh, but that was one of those monkeys that buzzed our field this morning. Look here, Royal. There just isn't any excuse for violating air discipline. You guys think I don't realize what a temptation it is? Time after time in the South Pacific, we'd be flying fighter escort on our attack group. We'd see a lone Jap plane away down there near the water, just asking for it. But we never broke formation. We let him alone. You mean you let him go in unopposed against your carrier when he's such cold meat? Listen to me. 
When you're on fighter escort, you've got just one job. To take your attack group out and to bring them back alive. And that doesn't mean breaking formation to knock off snoopers or shadowers. The combat air patrol will take care of those babies. Maybe. But I never heard of anybody getting the Navy cross for passing up a chance to knock off a Jap. Cage gyro. Raise flaps. Master gun switch. Pitch control. Tank selector switch. Starter toggle. OK, Rossi, 4-0. Yes, sir. Oh, so you knew you'd get a 4-0, huh? Well, sir, there isn't anything I can't memorize if I spend enough time with it. That's fine. But don't trust your memory too far, because it can get you in a lot of trouble if you depend on it. Trust this. The checkoff list will never let you down. But I memorized all that, too. Maybe you don't get the point, Rossi. You had to memorize everything in the cockpit so you can lay your hand on what you want in a hurry. But someday you'll be under terrific pressure, and you don't have time to rack your brain and ask yourself, now, what do I do next? That's what the checkoff list is for, to tell you to lower your wheels before landing. There was another pilot around here recently with a good memory like yours. His was so good he didn't have to bother with the checkoff list. So he tried to take off in a TBF with her wings folded. <laughs> I guess he just didn't have the word. Three words, Rossi. Check off list. Oh, thank you. observe radio discipline. Well, I get so lonesome up here at 8,000 feet, baby. That's a very lonesome altitude. You shouldn't be at 8,000 now. You were to hold that altitude for the first two legs in the problem. Not legs, dearie, limbs. The third leg should have been flown at 5,000. Look out below, here comes nothing. You said it. Got a standard letdown, Mr. Andrews. Well, maybe it's just a teeny bit faster than standard. Please correct the standard. This is going to be very fancy. According to my navigation, I am now directly over the ship. So stand clear of the flight deck. I'm about to make a breathtaking 14G pullout and land aboard. Don't bother, Mr. Andrews. You are now dead and buried at sea. 74 miles from your carrier and about 400 feet below the surface. Are you kidding? No, sir. Look at your chart. On your last turn, you applied that five degrees of variation the wrong way. So, you're 10 degrees an error. Hiya, Navigator. Okay, Andrews, pay off. Let's get those coats. Now, I hope your rear seat man's got plenty of insurance. Oh, Andrews is a good man to hear him say. Now, listen, take it easy, will you, fellas? You know, this link must have a built-in crosswind. Oh, <laughs> Here's where you first got into trouble. On the first turn, you came right to 050 magnetic. And there's a variation of five degrees. You should have included that. Oh, only five degrees? Well, that's not so very far off. No, not very far off. Only 75 miles. Don't you remember the formula from pre-flight? Compass, deviation, magnetic, variation, true, C, D, M, V, T. That's the formula. You can remember it by can dead men vote twice. Very corny. Come on, let's get those coats. <laughs> Mr. Andrews, you'll have to take that test again. Well, can't you give me a 2-5? That's good enough to get me past. Sorry, sir, but when you're trying to find your ship, the only passing mark is 4-0. Oh. All right, I'll give it another try. What do they get so excited about this kid stuff for? Listen, when I'm really in the fleet, I'll be able to fly my ship, all right? I got homing pigeon. 
blood. There's no point in saying to yourself, why should I learn about Blinker? What have I got a rear seat man for? You can't afford to depend on anybody else. You may not always have a rear seat man. And without an accurate working knowledge of all communications, you're a definite liability to the fleet. For instance, you may know radio procedure because you use that more than anything else. But someday your radio may break down, or you'll find yourself operating under a strict radio silence. And I can tell you there's nothing that'll make you feel as foolish and helpless as not knowing your blinker absolutely cold. Suppose you're circling your ship for orders, and some admiral signalman starts sending them to you fast, like this. Take it. Mr. Burns, what was the message? Uh, we well, see, sir, I, I didn't quite get the, uh, the, the first part. All right, what was it? Uh, the message read, a Burns doping off again, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and don't ever forget that not only your own life, but the success of your mission may depend on sure and instantaneous recognition of aircraft and surface vessels. The tremendous relative speed of modern aircraft only give you a split second to answer the question, is it theirs or ours? All right, lights out. Ensign Peters. Yes, sir. Perhaps I'd better have you excused from the recognition course. I beg your pardon, sir. If you don't pay any attention. Maybe you don't need this recognition course. All right, let's see how many of these you can name. Now. Uh, Ham. Now. Oscar. Now. Tony. Now. Betty. Now. Val. Now. Zeke. Now. P-40. Now. P-51. Now. Typhoon. Hey, Peters, when did he get so sharp on recognition? Oh, how can you miss him? He always shows him in the same order. Ham, Oscar, Tony, Betty, Val, and Zeke, P-40, P-51, Typhoon. Sure, their fault seemed almost trivial, because otherwise they were good pilots, and we needed them. Martin, who was willing to learn the hard way. Roy, the hotter type fighter pilot. Ross, trusting his memory instead of the checkoff list. And Andrews, satisfied just to skim by. Burns doping off. And Peters, who always found the easy way of doing it. Those six men came to the fleet, but they didn't leave their mistakes behind in training. They brought their mistakes with them to this task force and of this air crew. So this babe says to me, what's that written for? The Congressional Medal of Honor? I says, no, that's the order of the garter. He said, keep your hands to yourself, Fresh. Hey, Johnny, want another cup of coffee? I wish they let us know what's happening on Tower, eh? Relax, Sonny. Uh, give me one card. Yeah, I wonder what the commander's got on his mind this time. There goes Burns again, Toronto inside straight. Why don't you ask him, mister? Some gams, Rossi. Of course, the picture doesn't do her justice. You ought to see her when she's here. We must be down here somewhere. Yeah, but we're heading this way. I don't get it. Running away. We aren't running away. The island's practically ours. What do you mean, ours? All we did was fly cover for the fleet. The other air group got all the fun. <laughs> don't get eager, Royal. Japs are still building zeros. <laughs> and it? Oh, come in, gentlemen. Order just came down from the staff. At 0500, we'll launch a search to cover the sector from 265 to 355. The Japs should be in the westerly part of this sector, so use TBFs out to 275 miles in this half. Up here, use SBDs. 200 miles is enough. Aye, aye, sir. Singular two-plane sections. You've got some pretty green people that have never been in combat before. Better use two-plane sections. Five TBF sections flying 10-degree sectors in 
four SPD sections. Okay? Roger. Oh, John, I want a combat air patrol of 12 VFs. We'll have them on station at dawn. All right, then. Our code name for tomorrow is Red Base. If contact is made with the Japs, Red Base will launch an attack group of nine TBFs, 27 SBDs, and 12 fighters. Black Base will be launching at the same time, but you'll be able to rendezvous first. And you'll be followed in by two waves from Black Base. That'll give us a total striking force of 36 fighters, 27 torpedo planes, and 63 dive bombers. That's the plan. Have your flight officers make up the schedule immediately so that the pilots can be notified before they turn in. All right, yes, sir. Well, gentlemen, here's the story. The latest word is that we now hold both bomber and fighter strips on Tawai. Less than 2,000 Japs are still fighting, but the Marines have them crowded in a corner and there's no place for them to go but jump into the lagoon. I know you felt cheated because the other task force knocked out what zeros there were while we were backing up the line. But it looks like our turn now. With luck, it'll be within 24 hours. The Admiral expected the Japs to try to bring in reinforcements. This was more or less confirmed this morning by one of our subs. A big task force. A cargo class carrier. Mogami cruisers covering high-speed transports. That's why we're steaming away from Tawai. A few minutes ago, 1945 to be exact, we received a contact report from a PBY. The Jap Force is here. Course 100, speed 20. Now we're about here. Course 315, 25 knots. We're still in condition three. At 0400, we'll go to flight quarters. At 0500, it'll be condition one, general quarters. Combat air patrol will be launched then, and TBS will commence sector searches after 275 miles in this area. Dawn should find the Japs here if they hold their course. If they change it, they should be found somewhere along this arc. Now, the weather's bad out there, and the Japs are moving behind a front. Tomorrow, you start earning your living. So hit your sack early and get all the sleep you can. That's all. I trust you're contented now that the group commander gave you the straight dope. Well, I'm a guy that likes to be in possession of all the facts. You may quote me as saying Andrews has everything under control. Johnson, Williams, fighter escort of the attack group. Martin, you're scheduled for combat air patrol. Peters and Royal, fighter escort of the attack group. Yes, sir. Hey, Rossi, I just saw the flight schedule. They picked us to go out with the attack group. Why not? It's always the first time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Say, what kind of a medal does a guy get for singing a Jack Platkop? Sugar five is sugar five two. I'll give you two guesses who your wingman is on the search tomorrow morning. Sugar five two. Yeah, I guess I'll have to check you out. Oh, that's a mere formality, of course. I mean, after all, Yeah, I... yeah, I know. You've got homing pigeon blood. You said that before. Now, just for the sake of appearances, why not pretend you're just a common, ordinary pickle lugger like me, who has to depend upon navigation to get you there and get you back? Navigation? What's that? Cut the clowning, mister. Life may not seem so damn funny to you after tomorrow. Now, we're heading into bad weather, and I want you to stick close to me. And don't be reaching for that microphone every two minutes. No gags? No gags. Oh, this promises to be a very dull affair. I hope you're right, pal. Sound flight quarters. Aye, aye, Captain. Personnel, man your flight quarter stations. All air department personnel, man your flight quarter stations. 
We can figure on at least 10 miles for the building here. Therefore, we got this sector well covered. Pilots all checked out for search? Yes, sir. All my pilots are. I got several green ones, but they're all checked out, except Andrews. He's plenty green. What section is he in? Sugar 5, Lieutenant Wilson. Very well. But make sure Andrews has worked out his nav correctly before he's launched. And have Wilson check on him, too. Aye, sir. It's your job to protect the task force. And before the day is over, you may get more excitement than you bargained for. All squared away, Joe? Yes, sir. Do you sort of want to give him the word? It's a little late to try and give you the word now. If you haven't got it by this time, you probably will get it. We don't think that the Japs know that we're here. But it's axiomatic that if we're able to strike at them, they're able to strike at us, too. They know that we've got strength in this part of the world somewhere. They're not going to move a convoy against Hawaii without putting out snoopers. It's up to you and the fighter director to keep them from finding us. Here you are, sir. 0450, Captain. Bossons, down general quarters. Bogey 31055 closing. SC operator, search for bogey 31055. Flight plot bridge from CIC, single bogey 31055 closing. Hello, Amos. This is Tom. Single bogey 31055 closing. Designated raid one. Out. Hello, Red One. This is Red Base. Vector 310, Buster, Angels 8, over. This is Red One, Wilco. Vector 310, Buster, Angels 8, out. Hello, Red Two. This is Red Base. Detach and resume, over. This is Red Two, Wilco, out. Hello, Red One. This is Red Base. Single bogey ahead, 50 at 6,000 feet, over. This is Red One, Roger, out. Hello, Red One. This is Red Base. Look for bogey 10 miles ahead. Over. Kelly Ho, this is Red One. 3 o'clock down. 5 miles. 1 Betty. 6,000 feet. Over. Hello, Red One 3. This is Red One 1. Go ahead, Jake. Dick, you and Martin make opposite overheads. Red One 3. Hello, Martin. Take off list. Let's go. This is Martin. Let's go. See if he gets out. Hello, Whitey. This is Jake Brackett, flat side. This is Dick. Martin's gone. And Roger out. This is Red One, Grand Slam. We got the jab, but Red One Four was shot down. His plane sank. He didn't get out. This is Red Base. Roger. Red One, steer 095, over. This is Red One, Wilco, 095, out. Fly control from group commander. Pass the word to the hangar deck. Break out a spare fighter. 